Hey, and welcome to another CG Cookie tutorial. I'm Jeff Lang, and I'll show you how to create an animated text intro. What you'll learn in this lesson is a workflow for modeling and animating a text intro in Blender. This style is popular with movie trailers, so we're going to make up a movie to create a title for. You'll also learn how to bevel text, light a scene with the HDRI, and quickly create materials with an image texture. I'll also show you how to make a render pop off the background with some curves adjustments. With all that in mind, let's jump into a new project and get creating. So the first thing we need to do is pick a movie title. So I'm going to use the title Return of the Crumble. So let's start by going into top view mode with 7 on our keyboard and press Shift A to add a new text layer. And go into edit mode with tab and we can get rid of the placeholder text and I'll type in return and hit enter to make a new line of the crumble. And I'm typing it in all caps just because that's how movie titles are usually written. So then in my text properties over here, I'll scroll down to the paragraph section and make sure it's centered. And this will just make it look a little bit nicer. If you do want to pick a different font, you can pick a different font by clicking on this load new font from a file and select a font that you have in here and just click on it and hit open font. Now that we've got our text object set up, I'll go ahead and duplicate it with Shift D and press Enter to keep it in exactly the same spot. And then I'll just hide my original copy. And this is just so that if I ever need to go back to the original text object, I've got it all right here. So then I'll convert it to a mesh with Alt C and press Convert to Mesh. And then I'll go into Edit Mode with Tab and select All. And let's press W and remove doubles. And if you use the normal Blender font, it shouldn't find any duplicates. But I noticed that with some other fonts I was using when I was testing this out, there were doubles that needed to be removed. So you'll want to do that right away. The next thing I'll do is I'll do a limited dissolve. And that's going to make it so that these really complicated triangulated faces are very simple. So if I press X and press limited dissolve, you can see that makes things a lot simpler. And I like adjusting the max angle to about two degrees. And you can see that keeps some of my nice curvature on these rounded shapes, but keeps it still very simple. The next thing I need to do is I need to use my knife tool to make cuts on the faces for any letter that has an inside loop, like this B or the R or the O. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're doing this so that we can bevel the text later. So I'll just zoom into this R and I'll use my knife tool with K. And then I'm also going to press C just to make it so that the angle is constraint. And you can see down here that my angle constraint is on. And then I'm going to left click and just drag down and draw a line right there and press enter. And now I've got a nice edge right in the front of the face. So then what I'll want to do is find all the rest of my letters I need to do this for. So I also need to do it for this R and just keep going until I've got all of these edge loops created. For this O, I'm going to do two knife cuts, one vertically and press enter and another one horizontally and press enter there. Now that I've got all of my faces cut, I'm going to join some of the faces together. So to do that, I'll go into face select mode here. And then I'm going to select all the faces on the right hand side here and press F to join those into one face. So now I've only got two faces here. And you can see for this T that it's kind of messed up. There's a bunch of faces that don't look like they have any width. So what we need to do is go into edge select mode and just start selecting these edges and delete the edges. And now we've got just the vertices we want. So I can select all of them with box select mode with B and press F to draw the face. And you can see that my normals are flipped for this. So I just want to select this face and press spacebar and type normal. And I just want to select flip normals. And there we go. Now that face looks correct. So now I just need to go and merge all these faces together on the R and I need to fix my O. So I need to join these faces together and I need to fix this T again by deleting the extra edges here. 
There we go. And I'll probably need to flip the direction of the face once I create it. Yep. So I just need to press spacebar and type flip normals. And then I need to fix my R over here. So I just need to join these faces together with shift right click and F and then join these faces together with F. Okay, so now all of my faces are properly set up. I'm going to select everything with A, press P to go into separate mode, and separate by loose parts. And this will make each one of my letters a separate object. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything again and set all of their origin points to the center of mass. And that'll just make it so that each one has the center of mass right in the middle of the text object. So now I'm going to go ahead and rename all these objects by the letter that they are so that this one isn't text 005, for example. Now I've got all my text objects renamed. I can go ahead and start to make them have some thickness to them. So I'm going to use the B as my example here. And I'm going to go into the modifiers tab, add a modifier, solidify. And I'm going to change the thickness to 0.4. And then I'm going to select all of them with A. And let's make sure they're all set to be smooth. And then I'm going to press Control L to make links to the modifiers so that my B text objects modifiers, which is solidify, will be applied to all of them. So Control L, modifiers, and now they all have the same exact thickness. I'm going to apply the thickness by pressing Alt C and converting them to meshes. And then I'm going to add an edge split modifier and then do the same thing, Control L apply that modifier to everything. And you have to do it this way so that when you use the edge split, it doesn't actually create uh, duplicate vertices. So now that our text object is pretty much all set up, let's go ahead and start to add some material slots. So I'll just select this B object here and go to materials. And I'm going to make one slot here, make a new material and call this rough metal. And then I'm going to add another slot and call this material shiny metal. And we're doing this now so that when we assign the bevels, we can assign the material right away. So just to make this a little bit more obvious, I'm going to make my shiny material have a blue color. And I'm going to control C and paste that into the viewport color so that when we do apply it, you can see it right away. So to add these two materials to all of my objects, I'll press A twice and control L will make links to the materials. All right, so now we can start to bevel our text objects here. So I'll just zoom in on this B and I'll go into edit mode with tab. And in face select mode, I'm gonna shift right click to select both of these faces, but I don't wanna bevel these edges that I cut across. So I'll go into edge select mode and shift right click to deselect those edges specifically. And then I'll press control B 0.01 and 0.01 I found is a pretty good bevel depth for a default text size, and then press enter. And now all these faces are still selected, so I can assign this shiny metal material by selecting it and pressing assign. And now you can see that that material has been assigned properly. So now I'll just add the bevel to all of my objects here by selecting the front face, control B, 0.01, enter, and then assigning the shiny metal material. If you're wondering why I don't use the extrusion and beveling options that are included with text objects, the reason is that I often experience weird geometry artifacts that way, especially with certain fonts. In my experience, manually extruding and beveling is the cleanest method. All right, so now all of our objects have the bevel correctly assigned and the shiny metal material assigned to the bevel. Let's select everything with AA and press R, X, and 90 just to get it so that it's facing front. And this is also a good time to kind of fix any spacing issues that you have. So I'm going to just select all these objects down here and bring them up a little bit and select the second line. And I'm actually going to scale these down just a little bit because those words aren't as important. And then select all this stuff and just move it down on the Z axis just so that it's a little bit more tight of a composition. I'm also going to select everything and just apply our rotation and scale so that everything will go smoothly once we start animating it. Now I'll show you how to quickly add a HDRI world. Um, so let's jump into compositing. And you can see that the default world is already here for us. 
um, but just make sure you're using cycles render and that you're on the world tab. Also, let's make sure that you're using the excellent Node Wrangler add-on as this will make the rest of the process super easy. So you'll see that right away. If I click on this background node and press Control T, it will set up the environment texture and the mapping and the coordinate system for us automatically. And for this project, I'm going to be using an HDRI that I got from openfootage.net. So you will see that this is the image that I'll be using this garage low. And if we preview this HDRI with Shift Z in our 3D view here, we can see that everything is working. I'm actually going to make it so that the lighting is more uh, overhead. So I'll just rotate the Z axis by 90 degrees and that way it's more in line with our text here. And that'll just make our reflections look better once we start setting up the material. But we don't actually want to see this garage in our render. So we'll quickly solve that by selecting our background node here and pressing shift D to duplicate that. And then we'll add in a shader mix shader and we'll change this background color to be a really dark blue. So I'll just do that over here. And then we'll make the mix factor an input light path and we'll make the is camera ray light path the factor. And what this will do is make it so that our camera sees just this nice blue background, but everything in our scene will see our garage HDRI. And this will look a lot better once we get the shiny material going, which we'll do right now. So to set up our first material, let's go into object mode and we can start with the shiny metal material because that one will be the easiest. So let's delete this diffuse and shift A to add a glossy BSDF shader and connect that up to our socket here and turn the roughness all the way down. That's all we have to do for the glossy shader. And now we can go over to our rough metal, which will also delete the diffuse shader here. And let's shift A, add a glossy shader and plug that in. And we're going to use a rusty metal image for our roughness factor here. So to set most of it up, let's just select the glossy node and press control T. And let's control left click and drag to disconnect the color socket and turn the color into the roughness. And we don't have any UV maps for our text objects. So we'll have to delete that and use the generated node here. And then since we're using generated nodes, we also want to make it so that it's using the box projection and set the blend to 0.2. And that'll make it so we don't have to UV unwrap any of our text objects and save us a lot of time. So let's open up an image that I found from Dewion.com. And let's just preview that with Control Shift left click and Shift Z in our viewport here. So you can see it's kind of this like rusty material and we didn't need to unwrap any of our text objects, which is super cool. So let's connect our glossy node back into our material. And we can see that this is kind of working, but I want to adjust it a little bit more. So to do that, let's select all of these nodes with B and G to move them over. And then Shift A, add a color RGB curves. And we're going to use this RGB curves to make a little bit more contrast in our scene. So to do that, I'm going to add a couple points, kind of like right in the middle here. And that'll make it so that our rough metal is a little bit cleaner. And that looks a little bit too clean. So let's move these points out just a little bit. And there we go. That's looking like a really nice rough metal. And we didn't need to do anything. We just used a nice rusty image to do that. So now that we've got our two materials set up, let's go ahead and add the camera. So I'll go back into the default view here and go into top view mode and shift A, add a camera and let's rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and G Y to move it back until it's about there and switch to camera view with zero. And it's a little bit too close. So I'll just press G Y and drag up just to move it back just a little bit more. We don't want the whole frame to be filled with our title. And that looks pretty good. So now we've got our camera set up. Now we can start to animate our text. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it so that I can't accidentally select my camera. And just to make it easier to see, I'm gonna hide it for now too. So now I can select everything with AA 
and I'm just gonna shift right click one of these text objects here. And just right before we begin, I'm going to control A, apply the rotation and scale just so that these smaller text objects don't act up as we start to do stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make my text objects turn at the beginning of the scene. So I'm gonna start by jumping to frame 30 because this is where I want them to end up. And with everything selected, press I and insert a rotation keyframe. And as soon as I do that, you can see my rotation keyframes are all yellow, which is exactly right. And then I'll jump back to the beginning, frame one, and now I'm going to rotate them on the Z axis, but I don't want to rotate them all like this. That would look really simple. I want each letter to rotate on its individual origin. So in order to do that, I'm going to make the pivot point individual origins, and then I'll press R and then Z, Z to make it the individual origins, and I'm gonna type in 90 on my keyboard, and that will set the rotation to 90, and then all I need to do with my active frame being the first frame is press I and insert a rotation keyframe. And now if I press Alt A to preview that, you can see all of my text objects rotate properly. So I'll just jump back to the beginning with shift left arrow. And now that we've got our rotation set, I also wanna make the letter spacing or tracking expand throughout the whole project. So I'll start by setting my end frame to frame 200, just so it's not too long. And then I'm gonna start by inserting a location keyframe on frame one. So with everything selected, you can do that by pressing AA, hit I and insert a location keyframe. Then what I'm going to do is make sure my pivot point is the median point, and then I'm gonna adjust the center points. And that way I'm not gonna actually scale the objects, but what I'm gonna do is, if I just show you really quickly, press S and X, and then I can make them go apart like that. So let's jump to the end of my timeline with shift right arrow, and then I'm going to scale on the X axis by 1.2. And this will make it so that they expand a little bit. You don't want to go really far, but 1.2 is a good value. And then press enter. And then I'm going to lock that in by pressing I to insert a keyframe for the location. And now if I preview my animation, you can see them turn and then slowly start to kind of expand out. And it gives this kind of really cool effect. So one last little tip that I'm going to give you is how to make your text pop off of the background. So to do this, we need to go into compositing mode and we need to render a frame. So I'll just bring my camera back and render out a frame really quickly. So I can see from this render that my rough metal is a little bit too bright actually. So I'm gonna go back into compositing mode and go into my rough metal, which is right here, and just change the color to be a little bit darker right around there and let's render this and see how this looks yeah that's looking much better the edges and the front are separating but now you can start to see the issue which is that my overall text object is a little bit too dark so we're gonna fix that by setting up some curves and I'm gonna make the shine really pop with some fog glow nodes so now that I have a frame rendered out I can go into my compositing view here and just say I want to use nodes and then let's make some space by dragging this one over. So to bring this text kind of off the background here, I'm going to shift A, add a color RGB curves node, and make the shadows, which are a little bit underexposed right now, just pop a little bit more. So let's click to add a couple of points, and then I'll just drag this lower one up just a little. And now you can see this text is popping off the background a lot more. So I'm just gonna drag that up just a little bit more. There we go. And I might wanna make my background a little bit darker blue. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, move this to the side and shift A, add some filter glare. And then I'm going to make this a fog glow. And I'm just gonna shift D to duplicate this a couple times. And this will make the parts that do have a good reflection really pop. And you'll see this as the letters turn when we render our final animation. And this will look really, really great. So the last thing you would do is render out your animation to an image sequence. And that's it. That's how you make an animated text intro. Thank you so much for watching.